Hey guys, it's Kristen. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, I am a third semester doctor of physical therapy student at Mercer University in Atlanta, Georgia, and I make videos on my channel all about physical therapy school, so it would mean a lot to me if you could take a second to subscribe. Today's video is going to be all about how to choose a physical therapy school and kind of how to differentiate between different programs because there are so many. And I just wanted to preface this video by saying that the best physical therapy school is the one that you get into because it is very, very, very competitive to get into physical therapy school. And the point of this video is kind of to help you guys narrow down how many schools to apply to because I know that PTCAS is opening up in the next month or so. So if you are trying to narrow it down to let's say like five or 10 schools, I hope this video can help you do that. But whatever program you get into and whatever program you decide to attend is going to ultimately help you be a successful PT. So yeah, just wanted to say that. So I'm going to be referencing PTCAS in this video a lot. So you can check the description box down below. I will have a ton of helpful resources linked for you guys. But if you didn't know, PTCAS is essentially the common app for physical therapy school, so that is how you will apply to the majority of programs, and in addition to having the actual application on there, they also have a ton of information about certain programs, so that's kind of where you can turn to to find the answers to the questions I'm going to be talking about in this video, but you basically can like search for any school and it will tell you all about the program, the curriculum, how much it costs, how many students they accept, average stats, all of that. So PTCAS is going to be your best friend. I will have it linked down below. So, so the first number one most important thing I think you should consider when applying to physical therapy school is the cost. This not only includes cost of tuition, but also considering cost of living and stuff like that. So you really need to figure out your financial situation if you're going to be paying for school, if your family is going to be helping you out at all, if you plan to take out loans, and really considering all of that before deciding on a school. And you also need to factor in the cost of living. Like I said, about half of my class commutes and lives at home, so that obviously saves a ton of money. I live in an apartment, so you just kind of need to really take a look at your financial situation and consider that Obviously, going to an in-state school will be cheaper than going to an out-of-state school. Private schools are a little bit more expensive. So again, you can find the cost of tuition and stuff on the PTCAS website, but I think that is the biggest thing to consider because everyone knows how much physical therapists make. You can Google the average salary if you don't know, but you don't want to be spending so, so, so much money on school and living and getting your degree and then not even making enough to be able to pay it back in a reasonable amount of time. So really sit down and think long and hard about the cost of the program that you are attending. Also, the sun keeps setting, so I'm sorry if I keep like changing colors. I do film with natural light, so I can't really control that. But the second thing that you should take a look at is the NPTE pass rate. So if you didn't know, to become a physical therapist, you need to graduate from an accredited doctor of physical therapy program, and then you need to pass the boards exam, which is also known as the NPTE. And I think every school, I think they're required to release um, what percent of their classes pass the NPTE. My program I know is 100%. So you really want to go to a school that has a really high success rate um, of licensing their students because you don't want to go somewhere for three years and then graduate and not be a physical therapist. So. Make sure you're going to a program that has a high pass rate, really important. So another thing you're really going to want to consider is the size of the program. I went to the University of Georgia for undergrad, which is a huge school, and from that experience I learned that I really thrive in a smaller classroom setting. So I knew for PT school I wanted to go to a tiny program. My program is only 38 people, and I absolutely love how we are able to interact so closely with all the faculty and the classmates. I know some programs take like 100 plus students per class and they're bigger class sizes. You don't really get that same like family environment. So really just thinking about what is important to you and what setting that you'll learn best in. Again, on PTCAS, you can see the size of the classes. And the next thing you want to consider is clinicals. So every school does clinicals a little bit differently. 
in order to be accredited, you need to have a certain like week to weeks total of clinical. I think it's like 32 or something like that, but some schools like mine will save all of the full-time clinicals till the end of the program. So we take our classes for five semesters, then we have clinical for three semesters. Some schools integrate it in, so after semester three, say they'll have six weeks of clinical and then they'll have another semester. So really just figuring out if you'd prefer your clinicals to be dispersed throughout the curriculum or saved until the end. And not only that, but also if you can, some schools probably won't release this information, but try to talk to students and see how they decide on their clinical sites. Some schools will let you have a say, and if you say, I don't want to leave Atlanta, they won't make you leave Atlanta. Some schools make you do one out of state. Some schools make you do one out of the country. So just really seeing, again, this kind of ties back into the financials, um, seeing if your school will work with you and kind of let you have a say in where you are going for your clinicals because that is super important, I think, especially if you want to work in a setting that's kind of niche. Like I'm really interested in pelvic floor and my school is working really hard to try to get me an experience to have a pelvic floor clinical, but I don't even think some schools would let you do that. So just really, if you can, trying to find out as much information as you can about clinicals. If you do tour um, any PT schools, you can just raise your hand during the Q&A and say, how are clinicals decided? Where are most of the clinicals? Just something like that, trying to get a little bit of information about that. So the next thing I wanted to talk about is curriculums. So again, if you go on the website of most programs, they will have the semester by semester breakdown of classes. And obviously there are the core classes that every physical therapy student has to take to graduate like anatomy, cardiopulmonary, et cetera, et cetera. There are certain requirements, but some schools offer elective classes where other schools do not. Some schools teach dry needling while others do not. So just kind of seeing what other opportunities might be available and if that's something that's really important to you. I also know that some schools are way more research heavy than others and require you to be involved in research. I personally am not too involved in research, so I chose a program that was more clinical heavy and focused on actually working with patients rather than doing a whole ton of research. So if you are interested in research, trying to find a program that really values that and has a lot of opportunities for growth in the research department. The thing I wanted to talk about is study abroad opportunities and I know a bunch of programs do have like service abroad opportunities or you can do clinicals in like Guatemala or some crazy exotic place but some programs don't so if that's an opportunity that you're interested in maybe you didn't get to study abroad in college and you really want to in PT school Trying to find a program that will provide you with that experience is another thing to consider. And you also want to look at the scholarships that are provided to students. Some PT schools will offer scholarships upon admission before you even start the program. Other programs you will apply to the scholarship, say, after year one or year two. So this again ties back into the finances, just kind of seeing if there's any opportunities to get some sort of scholarship for your entirety of PT school. That is something that is necessary or important to you again considering that that is everything I wanted to talk about how to choose a physical therapy school for you and like I said in the beginning the best school is the one that you get into so take this all with a grain of salt these are just a few things to consider to kind of get your mind thinking about how one program might differ from the other because I do got get a lot of questions about why I chose Mercer and basically everything I just said is why I chose Mercer. Everything just kind of made sense for me. I loved the small program. I love the curriculum. I love how the clinicals are at the end. So everything just kind of, kind of worked out. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video and it was helpful in any way at all. And if so, please be sure to give it a like and comment down below. I love chatting with you guys and I will talk to you in my next video next week. Bye friends. Mm -hmm.